Welcome to a video series outlining the stages you will need to work on for your text adventure game. I'm going to start out in this video uh, just giving you some ideas about what text adventure games were and then I'll dive into Python 3 and the first stage that you're going to go through on developing your game. Uh, a text adventure game in its, uh, you can see here some examples, um, been around since the late 70s, the 80s. Um, and one of the most uh, popular text adventure games happens to be a game called Zork. Um, this is one of the, the earliest games. So we'll try Zork 1, uh, zorkonline.net if you want to have a little play yourself. And the player is presented when they first turn on uh, their game. Uh, west of the house, you're standing in an open field west of a white house with a boarded front door. There is a small mailbox here. So you can try commands out. You can. The player was allowed to write whatever they wanted, but they obviously only understand certain commands. So I might write break into... Uh, and of course that's not allowed so obviously there's limitations as to what the player can do but I'll open the mailbox um, and there's a leaflet um, so let's have a read read leaflet um, and then the player can do different things as they go and this is just a little leaflet that you could see um, I was west of the house so you know just to give you an idea I'm just going to go north uh, go north go north North of the house you're, you're facing the north side of the white house there's no door here and blah blah blah, blah. you can see the player can traverse around the map that they're in is actually quite detailed um, for Zork 1. There's, you know, all the maps exist online, obviously. It's quite fun to play without the maps, actually. Um, you can see that, obviously, this is the world that we were just in. And uh, we were west of the house over here on the left side. There's the mailbox. And you can see all we did was just go north and that's the rest of the world. Sorry if that's a spoiler for you and you wanted to play Zork without the, uh, the spoiler. Anyway, let's close that down and let's have a little look at what you'll be developing. Follow the link through from Schoology, please. Uh, and make sure you've got enough space on your screen so you can develop your game. Uh, you'll also need your guide in front of you. That's the guide. Um, and you'll need that if you're going get, to get developing with your project. OK, stage A. Um, the first thing we're going to be doing for stage A is adding a third location to the base script. We're going to call that location C. It's actually representing the, um, I'm going to do the keep. That's the, the, the environment that I'm going to add to. Um, let's see what's in the world at the moment. So in terms of what you can see in front of you, top left, this is where you're going to be coding. Bottom left, this is a backup. Please do not change it. Top right, this is a little guide that explains to you some information about what you're doing. And bottom right is where you actually get to play the game. Well, let's just fire it up already. Let's try run game and see what happens. Uh, so the run game button will always be in the guide and it should always be on the, the top right hand corner. It's later stages in the guide. You just click on this little button and it will traverse you through the different stages in the game. Um, so anyway, run the game and let's have a look. You are in a ruined castle just inside the gatehouse. Welcome to my adventure game. Um, why has that appeared? Let's have a quick look at the code. Um, the two things you will see in your code so far, uh, or the two uh, things called procedures are their names. Uh, you've got one here on line six called def location a bracket bracket colon, which means there is a definition here of a thing called a procedure. The name of this procedure is location a, and all that happens inside location A is when you, when, you, when you want to go there is all you will see happen is uh, you are in a ruined castle just inside the gatehouse. That gets printed. Um, the reason you see uh, you're in a ruined castle just inside the gatehouse when you run the game is, is actually because of this down here. Uh, on line 13, you see Welcome to My Adventure Game because, in fact, that's the first game that Python sees and evaluates because it's uh, not indented. You can see that it's over on the far left. Um, the reason none of these lines actually say anything as well is because of these little hashes. That means that these are comments, and that means that what follows on that line will not get any, will not be evaluated. So nothing has to happen. It's there for, so that you can understand what's going on, and you can put as many of them in as, in as you want as you go along. It's really just there to help you out. Um, so let's just answer. We can answer this question now. On what line of this sample game uh, is a procedure called? Well, if that is the, the definition of the procedure on line six and line seven is what it does when you ask it to run, line 14 is the line. So uh, I won't press check it, but you, that's just to give you an idea as to how, that, how you can use that. Uh, if we wanted to change it, we can write location B there, uh, run the game now, and you'll see you're in the Great Hall. So let's do the guide. Um, there was a couple of things to do. Add a new location. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to go to line 12. We're just going to add some lines in. We're going to write def location C. Uh, bracket bracket colon and 
When I press enter there, I'll return, because the way my Kodeo is annoyingly set up, you can see that there's two indents here. There's actually four spaces, uh, one, two, there's two doublet spaces. So if I go one, two, three, four, you could see that that's would, that would be in line. It is important that you keep it in line. Um, I'm not entirely sure why mine has decided to jump over to two spacing instead of four, because I actually have it set on Kodeo two. If I go to view, tab size, I've got it set to four, so I'm not really sure. But anyway, it's, it, all that matters is that you keep consistent. So this is using four spaces. So I'll just put in another two spaces for now, or I'll just press tab twice. Anyway, so what are we going to do at location C? Print, um, in speech marks, where are we? Let's have a little look where we're supposed to be going. We're adding in a third location. Uh, so for stage B, the next location you can see here um, is going to be the keep. So we've done the ruined castle and we've done the great hall. Let's go to stage B in a second. So we want to be in the keep uh, and we're on activity one. So let's add it in. Uh, you are in the keep. And that is it um, for now. We can change it so that the game starts in location C if we want, but more or less, you, if I run the game now, you're in the keep. There you go. That's the uh, that's the basics of stage A. Uh, let's answer the questions. Um, label lines with A where a procedure is being defined. Uh, so this is these are the definitions. So that's line six. That's a that's a um, procedure being defined, and where a procedure is being called uh, as B. So you can see. Oh, that's also one line. Line nine is an A, and line fourteen you can see is um is a call. This is known as a call. What this means is please run. Um, everything that's indented in location C. So that includes anything that's below here. So as long as they're indented, it will be part of location A.